Hey, what is up guys? MLT Magic Tricks here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you this really awesome card trick that will definitely confuse all of your spectators. So make sure you do stick around to learn this one. But really quickly before we get into this performance, if you are new here to my channel, make sure you subscribe with those post notifications on for more card and magic trick performance and tutorial videos like this one. If you do enjoy this trick, make sure you leave this video a thumbs up and leave in the comment section below what type of tricks you want to see me teach on the channel in the future. And now let's get right into this performance. Okay, so I would start off this card trick by having my spectator shuffle up the deck as much as they want to. So once my spectator is done shuffling, I would ask for the deck back, and I would just go ahead and give the deck a couple of cuts like that, just for good measure to really randomize our pack of cards. So this trick does work better if we have two spectators. Um, so for the performance, I'm going to pretend that we have a spectator A and spectator B, but if you just have one spectator, the trick will also work. But right now I would have spectator A go ahead and cut about a third of the deck. It's really up to them how many cards they want to cut. So let's say my spectator cuts uh, this many cards right here. Now I would have them cut some cards for spectator B. It's completely up to them. So let's say they cut uh, this amount of cards for spectator B. So at this point, um, the magician would turn around and have the spectators count how many cards are in their piles. So right now I'm going to play the role of the spectators as well. So in spectator A's pile, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. In spectator B's pile, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight cards. So um, the we have two piles here, seven cards in pile A eight cards in pile B. Uh, the Magician would just go ahead and give the deck a couple shuffles at this point just to really mix up our order. Now, uh, the spectators, they have their numbers memorized. We're gonna go ahead and take the two piles, just place them together and put them on top of the deck. Now, the Magician would just have one of the two spectators perform this part of the trick. Um, I would go ahead and have spectator A do it. It does not matter, it can be either one. So I would have spectator A think of their number, uh, the, you know, the number of cards that they had in their pile, and in this case it's seven, because the magician is going to deal cards one at a time from the top of the deck like this, and the spectator, in this case spectator A, is going to memorize the card in the position that uh, relates to their number. So their number was seven, the magician would deal cards off one at a time, just like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, here's seven, the spectator would memorize this card, in this case, the Ten of Clubs. Obviously, the magician is not going to know which card the spectator thinks of. Um, so in this case, Ten of Clubs, that's what the card um, my spectator memorized in the seventh position. And now the magician would deal about 25 cards uh, just to be safe because they, they are not 100%. They're, they don't know, you know what the number uh, that the spectator is thinking of. So seven, Ten of Clubs, all, um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm just gonna go ahead and deal on the 25 here really quickly. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take these cards, place them on top of the deck. Spectator A has the card memorized. In this case, remember the 10 of clubs. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, give the deck a couple of cuts here. I'm gonna go ahead and give the cards just a couple more cuts as well to really mix up our order. So we have the 10 of clubs as spectator A selection. They are the only one that knows uh, their card at this point, but we also have another spectator, spectator B, and they have a number as well. They had some cards in front of them and their number was eight. Now, the magician would ask uh, spectator B, what, what was uh, your number? They would say eight. Now, the magician would deal now eight cards from the top of the deck. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here is the eighth card. But before I turn it over, we're just gonna do a very quick recap. Remember at the start of the trick, my spectator could have cut as many cards as they wanted to from the start. Um, and that would have changed our numbers that we had. Now guys, remember my spectators, uh, selection spectator A, their card was the 10 of clubs. Now check it out. The card in the eighth position, my spectator B's number was somehow the 10 of clubs an impossible coincidence just like this. So guys, that is the trick. I hope this one made sense. Sorry, there's a lot of talking in the performance, but um, everything will make sense for how to perform it in the tutorial. So make sure you guys do stick around for it. Uh, let's get right into the tutorial for this amazing self-working card trick. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that performance. This is a great uh, self-working card trick that is perfect for any level magician to perform. 
Now let's get right into the tutorial. So the secret to this card trick is a crimped card. A crimped card is just one card out of the entire deck that is bent a little bit. And you can go ahead and make this um, in one of two ways. It's really easy to do. So just take out any card you want to from the deck. I just chose the Joker. You can go ahead and bend it like that if you want to. Just kind of in half, sort of like that. Give a little bend. Or you can do um, what I did. It's a little bit more of a subtle uh, bend in the card. You can take your pointer, middle, and thumb from both hands and just apply pressure from the middle outwards to the, um, a couple times like this. And just for good measure, you can also just give a little bend like that to make your crimped card. You're going to go ahead and just set this in the middle of the deck somewhere. And you're ready to start. So from here, the trick is basically no setup. Once you have your crimp in the middle, you're going to have your spectator go ahead and shuffle up the deck as much as they want to. And once they're done shuffling, you're going to ask for the deck back. And essentially what you're doing here is locating the crimp because you need to bring that crimped card to the bottom of the deck. So in this case, it's a little bit uh, you know close to the top. You're going to be able to see this natural break that's caused by the crimp. You're just going to lift up like this, that crimp is going to be on the bottom of this top packet. And all you need to do is do a double undercut. You're gonna control the crimped card to the bottom of the deck, just like that. Now the crimp is on the bottom and you're ready to move on. So from here with the crimped card on the bottom, you are going to ask your spectator to cut about a third of the deck. Now this trick does work better with two spectators just because if you have one, they have to do a little bit more memorizing. But if you just have one, the trick will still work. It just does work a little bit better with two. So either way, you're going to have your spectator cut about a third of the deck. It's up to them. Um, just tell them about a third because if they cut like three quarters of the deck, this trick will take too long. It'll drag out too long. Uh, so out of, about a third works perfectly. It's up to them. Honestly, the exact amount of cards. So uh, this amount will work fine. So once they have uh, cut the cards from the deck, you're going to tell them just to cut a second pile. If you have two spectators, you're just going to tell them, okay, go ahead and cut some uh, for your friend here. Now we're going to go ahead and cut some more cards. It's up to them exactly how many they want to cut. Now you're going to have two piles. And from here, you can go ahead and turn around because you're going to have both spectators or just the one count how many cards are in each pile. So in this pile, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just so we don't forget our numbers, I'm going to go ahead and write them down here. So in pile A, we have 10 cards. Now in pile B, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These are going to be completely random numbers. It does not matter um, the exact numbers, obviously. So we have 10 and seven. Um, your spectators are going to memorize those numbers. Just spectator A, they memorize theirs. And spectator B memorizes theirs. They don't know, need to know each other's. Now from here, what you need to do is basically just control that crimped card that's on the bottom at this point. You just need to bring it to the top. So all you need to do, you can just do an overhand shuffle. Go ahead and shuffle it there to the top. It's really easy. It's on the bottom. You take some cards here, slide them off like that, bring it to the top. Do a retain shuffle if you want to, to keep that card there on top. From here, once the crimp's on top, you're going to have your spectators, piles, you're going to bring them together just like that and place them on top of the deck. At this point, um, with both uh, spectators' packets on top, you're going to ask either one of the spectators to do this. Or if you have one, tell them to think of one of their numbers in this case we have 10 and 7 so they're going to uh in this case let's say we do spectator a they're going to think of the number 10 because you're going to tell um your spectator that you're going to deal cards one at a time from the top of the deck and they are going to memorize a card in a position that relates to their number so you can just give your uh spectator an example here just so they know what you're talking about so you can just go ahead and say if your number is three you're gonna memorize the third card now you're gonna go ahead and just deal cards one at a time make sure you're counting out loud you have one two three four five six seven eight nine now here in the tenth uh position is going to be the seven of diamonds that is going to be uh the spectator selection so seven um, of diamonds right here. Now, at this point, you are not going to obviously know what card they memorize because they're the only ones that know their number, which is really great. So they are going to be thinking of the seven of diamonds. And what you need to do here is deal past the crimped card. So you will see what I'm talking about right now. So we have the seven of diamonds. Your spectator is thinking of that. We, that's in the 10th position, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 right here, um, one card past the sum of the two numbers, in this case, 10 and 7. You're obviously not going to know that, but you're going to be able to uh, recognize the crimped card. So you're going to say, okay, we have the Joker. You're going to say, okay, here's the crimped card. You just need to deal past it. So go ahead and deal a couple cards past it just to be safe. 
like that. Once you have dealt some cards past the crimp, um, you're going to say, okay, I have, you're going to ask your spectator, do you have a card in mind? And they're going to say, yes. You're going to take all these cards, place them on top, and you're ready to move on with the trick. So from here, you're going to locate your crimp just like this. You're going to be able to find the crimp. You're going to go ahead and lift up from the break just like so. The crimp card is going to be at the top. Um, I mean, at the bottom of this top packet, and you need to do a double undercut here. So you're going to lift up, you're going to do a double undercut, bring the crimp to the bottom, like so. Now you're almost done. Once you have done that, you're going to need to bring one card from the top to the bottom. You have one card extra here on the top. Remember, guys, this is a self-working trick. So all you need to do is just get a little thumb break, just like this, below the top card. Double undercut that right to the bottom, and you're ready to do the final part of the trick. So at this point, you should have... A random card and then a crimp at the bottom and while you're doing that you're just going to tell your spectator you're giving the deck some cuts to really mix up the pack now you're going to go to the other spectator or if you just had one you're going to ask them to say the other number that they had if you had another spectator you're going to tell them to say their number out loud they'll say seven then you're going to deal seven cards or whatever number it was from the top of the deck and go one two three four five six and then the seventh card will be the selection that your spectator saw earlier um, that, that you know corresponded to their number. This is a really great self-working trick. It's got a cool ending. Definitely give this one a try. It will fool all of your spectators. I hope everything I explained made sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. It's a pretty straightforward trick once you memorize these steps, but uh, definitely give this one a try, guys. Let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next one. Peace out.